Hey, Cameron here with the Sea Butters channel. And I'm in the unique situation where I have the ability to kind of play and contrast both the Surface Pro 8 and the Surface Laptop Studio. Now, going into this generation, I was super excited to be having two of these devices coming through at the same time. Both of them complete redesigns or, com yeah, both both are complete redesigns of their uh, respective models. The Surface Laptop Studio replacing the Surface Book series of laptop, which I have really enjoyed. Um, but I've always had a very uh, soft spot in my heart for the Surface Pro um, ever since uh, the Surface Pro 3, because uh, I've used every single version since then. But uh, one of the things that made, had me choosing the Surface Book over Surface Pro was the fact that it had uh, those extra NVIDIA graphics inside the Surface Book, which the Surface Laptop Studio carries that tradition, but we now have Thunderbolt ports, which changes the scenario a little bit because you can now use eGPUs. So when these uh, devices were announced, I was all in on on the Surface Laptop Studio, uh, but I decided to go ahead and order both of them so I could decide which one really fit me best and go from there. Uh, so this, I mean, this video is going to contrast and compare the Surface Pro 8 and the Surface Laptop Studio, but more from the perspective of me. So hopefully that's useful. Uh, to you, but uh, that's that's the way I'm going to come at it in this video. Um, when here's here's the thing when when if we look at the size of these devices, let me go ahead and shut those down. Let's put the Pro 8 on top of the Surface Laptop Studio, and you can see um, that it's quite a bit bigger, but not as not much bigger than you would think. I was excited because I always thought the Surface Book 15-inch was a little too large. I actually preferred the Surface Book 13-inch size, but for the better graphics, I always went with the 15-inch uh, Surface Book. So um, it's kind of nice to see this in-between model uh, hit the hit the market. I think it's it's exactly the right size that it needs to be. Now when I pulled the, like I say, I was very excited about this device, but when I first pulled it out of the box, I noticed that it, it, it felt a little bit heavy. Um, it felt heavier than Surface Book 315, but only because it's a little more dense. Um, and Surface Book 315 is a bigger device. It kind of has like that wedge-shaped hinge that comes out. And the net effect was it didn't feel quite as heavy as this device felt. It's still not, I mean, it's still very manageable. It's, a, it's not a big device by any means. But it does, it is dense. Um, and also the other thing that I, I started thinking when I, when I first opened up this this device was, hey, uh, I expected, to some extent, I expected that it would actually hold a position here. Like I was thinking you could kind of have it float over the keyboard and you'd still be able to reach your hand underneath. I think some of the marketing material that Microsoft put out kind of almost even portrayed it that way, uh, usually with a hand holding it, so they weren't really being disingenuous, but... Um, you're not you're not going to use it like this with it flapping around with access to the keyboard. I thought you'd maybe be able to write, but still hit keys underneath, which would be really cool. Um, because once you have it here uh, supplanted with the the magnets here, it it does create a really nice wedge. But I but in my head, and I'll get to where my opinion maybe has changed in a second here. But I just thought, who's gonna Who's going to use it like this? Who, who in their right mind is going to actually... Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got the mouse, you got some touch. Okay, that's, that's fine. But if I'm going to use it as a tablet, I'm just going to bring it down and, and use it as a tablet is what I was thinking. 
Um, and then I got holding it as a tablet, and it's four pounds. I mean, the Surface Book 3 could be heavy, but once you pop the top off, you had a very light, although large, tablet, but very light compared to this four-pound chonker here. So the tablet mode, I was just like, I, I just don't know if I see myself, you know, crooking this in one arm and, and riding with it. So um, my initial impression of the Surface Laptop Studio was I, I was a little disappointed coming into it. So um, that has changed a little bit. Uh, I have come to appreciate the nuance of this device, especially when sitting on the couch with this thing. If you have this on your lap, it feels awesome, especially versus if you have the Surface Pro on your lap, you kind of have this wedge hitting into your thighs. It's not bad. It's a very light device, but it kind of wobbles. You know, you, you can adjust this uh, kickstand in kind of infinite number of versions, which really helps. Um, but this thing, I mean, man, it feels like a kiosk and you can push on it. It's floating on this base that floats right in your lap. It's like you have a built-in lap board for a very thin and light tablet. I mean, this Razor's Edge, I was very thin, very nice to use. The second thing that struck me about the studio as I actually started to use it was the fact that the, that the uh, audio was so good. I mean, coming from any other Surface device, the audio on this sounds incredible. Plenty of volume. It actually has some bass and mid-tones in there. The highs are great. It, it caught me off guard, but I'm also going to say the Surface Pro 8 audio solution is much better than previous Surface Pros as well. In fact, I, you see me, I run this Tomb Raider benchmark on here, and it kind of has a storm going on in the background. Man, that thing kicked off, and I thought, I thought it, was, it was thundering outside. It was that good. There was a 3D kind of effect to the audio. And I've, I mean, I've benchmarked a lot of surfaces, but the audio on these two devices is really, really good. So, um, as I use this on my lap, you know, you could browse Reddit or whatever you're looking at, watch some YouTube videos. Um, and then you can pop it up really quickly and start typing. And then uh, watching something else, you're on here, and it's really nice. It kind of floats there. Uh, and I, was, I came away impressed. Uh, this is the ultimate couch media consumption device. I'm, I'm not kidding. It is very good for that. Um, not to mention, uh, you know, you can get the pen capabilities. Um, so even though at first glance... I was disappointed with the Surface Studio and I started focusing on the Surface Pro 8. Um, I've come to appreciate the Surface Studio a lot more. The haptics in the touchpad is really nice. Um, also, the attention to detail on this thing. Uh, Pan Pano said that and he's not wrong because I'm going to show you a few things. Watch when I close this. Did you see that? Watch when it closes. Did you see how it just, it, it subtly snaps into place and just, just lightly drops at the very end. Uh, the lid closes awesome. And look at this, look at this right here. This crease is not just here to kind of separate the, the look. This black band lets you put a fingertip under this thing and lift it, lift it effortlessly. Also, uh, the vents on this device. I know people have given it like oh, a double decker sandwich, like this looks weird, I hate it type vibe, but I th I think it's it's just brilliant. If you if you look at the bottom here, uh, the pen goes right here. Let me grab that. You've got the pen that goes right here that clips onto it. And then at the same time, they keep that same edge, but 
what that does is it makes it so when this device is bumping up against something, a bag, your leg, clothes, anything, you still, it, it stops the vents from being blocked. It can still get air in and out of those vents because of that design. And that's not just a fluke. That's, that was their intent. And it's, it's pretty smart. Um, I, I, I get why other people have not done it that way. Um, but I, I think it's actually really cool. And you don't notice that double stack. If it's on the desk, no one's ever going to see that. I, no one notices it. Um, it does not, it does not look weird in person. It, it may look weird when you're looking at a product shot right from the side, but don't, don't even worry about that because A, who cares? Like, <laughs> That's me. I don't, I don't care what other people think. Is the device functional? Does it improve the quality of life? Does it improve uh, the ability for me to do what I want to do on the device? I say yes, because it does a great job cooling. Uh, the Nothing gets warm on this. If you, I've used G14s, gaming laptops, um, with similar, you know, power in computing, and uh, they get super hot. Some of the some of the top areas of the keyboard, especially, just get very very hot. And this thing may get like mildly warm to the touch, but but not not anything like uh, a comparably a comparably uh, spec laptop of any other maker that I've seen. I mean, this thing runs cool, and uh, I I really like the design of this. So. Um, as I played with this Surface Studio more, I, I liked it a lot. I really liked the way it felt doing my couch surfing here. Uh, just just was really nice. So um, that's the Surface Laptop Studio. Uh, after having said all these nice things about the studio, I personally still am going to for my own personal use, use the Surface Pro 8. And I'll tell you why. Um, first of all, the only reason I stepped up to the Surface Book was to get those better graphics. Um, but now, and here's the thing, I don't, I don't use the better graphics very often. Um, but it was still nice to have with the Surface Pro 8, I don't have uh, I don't have to do that anymore because I can use an external GPU. You know, for the once or twice a month that I'm going to go play some games with with friends or my brothers or whatever, um, I can do that, and I can do that using the exact same device that I do everything else with. I don't have to have a Surface for taking notes and for the design that I've. I really love and love using in business and then also have to carry around a gaming laptop because I literally have done that. I've carried around a Surface Pro and a gaming laptop to have the best of both worlds. And um, while well, you, yes, you can make the argument, well, now you have to carry around a Surface Pro and an external GPU. Uh, well, I guess that's, that's maybe a valid point. Um, but that eGPU I can take when I know I'm going to need it, um, and I don't have to make sure that I have, if I want to make sure I have things loaded, I can do it all on one device. I don't have to have two different computers and manage different accounts and manage different logins. I can do it all here, and when I want to use that external graphics, I have it. And um, for me, having the ability to have this lightweight tablet that I can pull off and use for me is is nice. Uh, this is I take lots of notes and meetings and uh, I just love this form factor. Now uh, I haven't even gotten to some of the improvements necessarily of the Surface Pro 8 versus Surface Pro 7 um, but obviously uh, the much larger screen that goes all the way to the edges uh, I love that they still left a bezel on the side. I, I mean, you need it for the type cover to clear, but 
I, I, people always made fun of the Surface Pro 7 for still having uh, bezels like it did, but I was just like, what? I, if it had a tiny bezel, I, I'm not going to be able to hold it without tapping things. I love that they left two bezels. It's great. You get a much larger screen. It's still the right aspect ratio. Um, it's great. Rounded edges, fill, very nice. Um, it add, the Surface Pro 8 has a bit more heft to it than a Surface Pro 7. This has, uh, I mean, it's close to 2 pounds rather than being 1.7 on the Surface Pro 8. And part of that's just due to design, but it's also due to the fact that this chassis is now made out of aluminum instead of magnesium. And uh, some of my friends and colleagues over on the tablet PC forums have pointed out, hey, aluminum has 3x the heat dissipation of magnesium, which I think could play a big part into why I've seen, if you've watched my throttling videos, uh, it it is performing very, very well. It is not going at a super high rate and then just clamping down and throttling down to, you know, 800 megahertz and 12 watts like some of the surfaces have done. Um, this thing can run all day long at pretty much at least 20 watts which is a good amount of performance. Um, and if you are in an air-conditioned room, have good ventilation, or throw a fan on it like you've seen me do all the time, um, if you do that, this thing can push 35 watts. 35 watts. That's incredible. Um, so this is the most powerful Surface Pro we've ever seen. It's the most beautiful. It has an amazing screen. Uh, the resolution went up on this thing where from the Surface Book, the Surface Laptop Studio actually loses resolution. So um, I, I just love this device. I love that I can do what I want with it, uh, to have the flexibility to add a GPU on it. I, I love the type cover that I can just literally, it's fuzzy, it's, you, it's durable. You can set it down on stuff and not worry uh, that it's going to scratch or, or whatever. Um, so that's why I decided I was going to stick with the Surface Pro 8. Now the one thing I was missing out with the, uh, that I was, was giving me a little bit of heartache because I was like, well, you know what? I just love this mode for browsing the web, um, when it's down in this mode right here. But, um, I also had a few of my, my friends over at the, uh, uh, tablet PC review uh, forums point out uh, something that I had forgotten uh, long ago about the Surface Pro 8 and that was this. You can actually take the Surface Pro 8 and you can flip the cover back like this and check it out. I now have that base that I want that, that gave me that base fill uh, for browsing on the couch, still bringing the screen closer to you, um, but it's also infinitely adjustable. This the the hinge on the Surface Studio does not have it has three positions: tablet, laptop, and that kind of base tent mode. Um, but the Surface Pro 8, it can it can be whatever angle you want. So that's actually kind of a plus for the for the Pro 8 and if you flip flip this back like this you can get the same effect um, and also that puts your pen in a super easy position so um, for me there was not enough uh, benefit to stick with the Surface Studio because this thing in tablet mode is kind of a beast where the Surface Pro 8 is still, while it's a it's a it's a big boy tablet, it it is not a heavy. I mean, this is double Surface Studio, double the weight. If you're going to use it as a, as a tablet, so for me, sticking with the Surface Pro 8, but I I am going to say that I I actually think that. The Surface Laptop Studio has a ton of value. Um, if you aren't 
or don't have the means or don't want to carry around two different pieces if you want the graphics. Anyone who wants something that's going to allow them to create with a pen, a beautiful screen, um, unique design that improves your ability to get things done, I think the Surface Laptop Studio is an amazing piece of kit. But for me, I'm still going to stick to the Surface Pro 8. But I, I think they're both pretty great. But uh, anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it's very long, but uh, Surface devices have become personal to me. So I, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll see you guys soon.